Section 3.2, Synthetic Division. In this section, we're going to focus on synthetic division, evaluating polynomial functions using the remainder theorem, and testing potential zeros. Synthetic division is just the process that we use for dividing a polynomial by a binomial. This is hopefully something that you will remember from Algebra 2. Example 1, use synthetic division to divide. So the first thing that we have to do with synthetic division is set up our bracket. So we're always going to draw this first as kind of a structure for our synthetic division. Next we're going to take the binomial x plus 2 and we're going to set it equal to 0 and solve. Or you can think of it as just changing the sign of the 2. And that's the number that's going to go out front here. Next, we're going to take our coefficients, 5, negative 6, negative 28, and negative 2, and we're going to write them on the top line. Now, we're just going to do a series of adding down and multiplying by negative 2, multiple times over and over. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is bring our 5 down. Think of it as adding it down. And now we're going to multiply it by negative 2. We get negative 10. Again, we're going to add down. We get negative 16. And then we're going to multiply that negative 16 by negative 2. We get 32. Add down, we get 4. Multiply 4 times negative 2, we get negative 8. And then add down, we get negative 10. So again, you're just adding down, multiplying by negative 2. Adding down, multiplying by negative 2, over and over. Now, our final answer is going to be a polynomial. We just took a polynomial of degree 3, divided it by a binomial. So we're going to rewrite our final answer using one less degree. So my original numerator had degree 3. See how the highest exponent here was a 3. So we're going to reduce that by 1, and our answer is going to be degree 2. So we're going to have x squared with the 5 and x with the negative 16. So here's our final answer written in polynomial form. We're going to write our remainder over x plus 2. Negative 10 in this case was my remainder. Now let's talk about the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem says that if the polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, the remainder is equal to f of k. So what that means is I could have gotten that remainder of negative 10 by just plugging in my negative 2 to the equation. That's another way to do it. Make sure though that you read the directions whenever you're taking a test. If it says to use synthetic division, then you need to make sure to use synthetic division. So let's apply what we just talked about. We have our polynomial f of x, and we're going to use it to find f of negative 3. Now we all know to find f of negative 3, you can just plug negative 3 in for all of the x's that you see and evaluate that and get the answer. But make sure that you use synthetic division um, whenever you're doing this in the homework or on the test because that's what we're going to want. Before we get started, I want to point out that this polynomial is missing its x to the third term. So whenever we write out our coefficients, we're going to need to make sure that we use a 0 for that coefficient. So let's start by setting up our bracket here. And anytime we have, in this case, f of a number, f of negative 3, that number is going to be the number that goes out front here. Don't change the sign of it. It's not x plus or minus number it's already giving you the number we want to evaluate at. Next we need our coefficients. Remember we're going to use 0 for the x to the third coefficient. And now we can go ahead and do our synthetic division. So bring down the negative 1, multiply, add down, multiply, add down. And we end up with negative 47. Now in the last example, we wrote our final answer as a polynomial. 
we don't want to do that this time. We're not dividing two polynomials and writing the answer out. What we're doing is we're trying to find f of negative 3, which is equal to one number, negative 47, our remainder. So our final answer is f of negative 3 equals negative 47. You can always check to make sure you're right by just plugging negative 3 into f. When we do that and we evaluate this in our calculator, we see that negative 47 is the correct answer. Again though, on the test, on the homework, you're expected to use synthetic division. Just doing it the way I did in blue right here will not get you credit. Alright, in chapter 3, where we're heading is we're going to be graphing polynomials here um, in the next part of chapter 3. And something that's going to be really important to graphing is finding the zeros of the function. So those are the spots where we cross the x-axis with our graph. So what we're going to need to do eventually is we're going to test potential zeros. We're going to say, well, this number might be a zero of my function. Let me test and see if it is. So using synthetic division and the remainder theorem, here's what we have. A zero of a polynomial function, f of x, is a number k such that f of k equals zero, which means if I do synthetic division and I test to see if k is a zero or not, I'm going to get zero for my remainder if it is one of my solutions, if it is a zero. So the remainder theorem gives us a quick way to decide if a number k is a zero or not, and um, here's what we're going to do. Number one, we're going to use synthetic division to find f of k. And number two, if the remainder is zero, then we know that f of, or that k is a zero. It's a solution. If the remainder is not zero, then we know k is not a zero, and we can move on and test a different number to see if it is a solution. So let's kind of practice that in example three. So for example three, you're going to decide whether the given number k is a zero or not. Remember, anytime I'm saying if something is a zero, it means if it's an x-intercept, if it's a solution, a root. There's multiple words we can use for that. We're going to start by setting up our bracket, and the number that goes out front here is just going to be 1, because we have k equals 1. Remember, we don't change the sign, we don't set it equal to 0 and solve if it's already k equals 1. Next, we need our coefficients. And now we can do synthetic division. We're going to bring down the 1 and multiply it. Add down, multiply, over and over. In the end, we get our remainder of 0. So I ended up with negative 6 plus 6. I got 0 out for my remainder. So my answer here is yes, k equals 1 is a 0 of f of x. Again, that's because my remainder ended up being 0, this number right here. I want you to pause your video and try part B. Find out if k equals negative 1 is a 0 of f of x. I hope you remember to put the 0 there for the x to the third term. So after I did synthetic division, I got 6 as my remainder. Since 6 is not 0, my answer here is going to be no. k, doesn't, k equals negative 1 is not a 0 of f of x.